Hey, welcome back to Mr. PLS with Algebra 2. This is Unit 2, Type of 2, SLT number 15. And the purpose of this video is to show you how to draw a rough sketch of a graph based upon the characteristics that you've been learning about in previous um, videos about even and odd functions and different degree polynomials. Uh, we're going to start off with three basic functions, which this first one is linear because it has a degree of 1, has an exponent of 1. Uh, the 0 in this case, so if you remember how to solve or how to graph, sorry, how to graph linear equations, so you know it's y-intercept is at 1, so that's mx plus b. b is the y-intercept, and the slope is 1, 1x one plus 1. So you know it's for every right one, it's going up 1, and for the, every left one, it's going down 1. So the graph is going to look like this. Now, where does this graph hit the y-axis? It hits right here at negative 1. So that's its only 0. 0 just means where is the x when it has a height of 0, basically. Its end behavior, as you go to the right, it's going up infinitely. And as you go, as the further you go to the left towards inf negative infinity, you're going down towards infinity on the y. So that as the x gets lower, the y also gets lower. So when you have a quadratic, this has a degree of 2, and the reason why is because it has x squared involved. Uh, if you remember your transformation forms, what is ever on the inside is your h, and it does the opposite of what you would think. So instead of plus 1 going to the right, it actually goes to the left. And then the next one is anything to the first power is 1, anything to the second power, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything to the third power would be 9, and so forth. But once again, I'm just doing a rough sketch, so it's going to look something like this. Sorry, I know it's not the per most perfect answer. Um, zeros just means if you set the equation equal to 0 and solve, then that would be your answer. So in this case, it's going to be negative 1. So if you set x plus 1 equal to 0, you would get negative 1. Or you can just look at the graph and see it. it's negative 1. Uh, the further I go to the right, the further it goes up towards infinity. The further I go to the left, the further it also it goes up towards infinity. No matter which direction you go, left or right, you're going up towards infinity. And cubic functions. Now, you remember, cubic functions look like this. And if you remember your transformations, again, plus 1 goes to the left. So you know that's going to be the center point. You know it's going to be looking something like this. Now, I'm just doing a general description. It's going to look something like this. Now, if I was going to be more specific about it, um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to keep it the way I had it a second ago. I know it's not going to look exactly like that, but that's a pretty good idea. So this is the degree of 3. It's zeros is negative 1. The further I go to the right, the further it goes up. The further I go to the left, the further it goes down. And now we're going to get to what we're actually doing for this lesson, which is talking about what we saw in the last video, which multiplying these two binomials and being able to do a rough sketch of it just based upon the key characteristics. So I know the degree is going to be 2 because I know I have 1x multiplied by 1x and x times x is x squared. So I know this is quadratic. I know that right away. Uh, the zeros. I know the zeros are going to be if I set each one of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So I know I'm going to have a 0 at negative 1. One, and I'm also going to have a 0 at positive 2. And last thing I need to know is the end behavior. So there is no number out here. So it's really just a 1. It's a positive 1. Since it has a leading coefficient of 1, then you know it's going to be going up. So it's going to go up like this. Something kind of like that. Uh, oh, actually, that can't be it. Sorry, let me try that again. So something more like this. Uh, rough sketch, once again. I do know that these are the two zeros, so I do know the graph has to hit the x-axis at those two points. The further I go to the right, the further I know it's going to be going up because it has a leading coefficient of a positive. The further I go to the left, the further it's going to go down. Uh, put it into a graphing calculator, and you're going to see it's going to look something like that. Oh, oh my gosh, that has a degree of 2. What am I doing? Uh, some of you are probably wondering, what am I doing with my graph? No, 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 no. All right, let's try that again. Sorry, I looked at this next question. I saw that it was a cubic function, and I realized I did this one wrong. So this one is going to look like that. My fault. It's going to go like this because it's quadratic odd degrees look like this. Not sure why I was thinking that. Uh, this is an odd degree because uh, it has two x's here plus one more x here. makes an odd degree of three. Uh, its zeros are going to be at negative one and positive two. I just set each one of these factors equal to zero and solved. 
I did that basically in my head. It's fairly easy. Uh, negative 1, I'll plot those two points, which are here and here. And this one's going to look like the graph that I just did a second ago. And my end behaviors, I believe, were wrong on this one. So as the further I go left, it's going up for both. And this one's going to be up to the right, down to the left. Sorry for the confusion. Uh, the degree on this one's going to be 4, so I do know it's going to have this general shape again. It's got a positive leading coefficient, and its zeros are at negative 1 and positive 2. Set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So negative 1 and positive 2 are here and here. Now, the only difference to this is going to have a longer stay, kind of like that. Now... Whereas x squared would be a little bit more rounded at the bottom. That's my best way of explaining that. Um, otherwise, everything's going to be exactly the same. It's going to go up no matter what for both left and right. So if I go this way, it's going to go up. And if I go left, I'm also going to be going up. Um, and so let's go one more. I think this will be the last one, though. So 3, 4, 5, degree of 5 this time. Our zeros are a negative 1 and positive 2 and positive 1. Okay, so I'll plot those first. Ooh, very close together. Uh, let me just double check that. So negative 1, positive 2, neg and positive 1. Yep. Um, this is an odd degree, so I do know it's going to make this general shape, and it's going up to the right and down to the left. And I know that because of the shape, down to the left, up to the right, because it's got a leading coefficient that's positive. All right, so this is gonna be like this. It's gonna go up, it's gonna come back down, it's gonna pass, and then go back up again. So generally, that's gonna be the shape. Now, I'm not saying it's exactly that, though. Um, oh, I do have a few more. Okay, so two more, three, five again and this one only has two zeros at negative one and two uh, which means this is going to kind of go like this where it's not going to go past the x-axis again like it did in the last question it's going to look just like that and the end behavior i think we understand it's going to go up towards infinity to the right and down towards infinity to the left because it's an odd degree and with a positive leading coefficient positive leading coefficient three Four, five. So this is a 5 again. Um, okay, so this I need to figure out this first. I can I, I can factor this. Was this? Um, oh, can I factor this? So I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of 1 but also add up to 1. Oh, that's not factorable, is it? Um, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult trying to find the zeros to this because this is actually going to have two zeros in it. So I would need to do that. So this is going to be negative 1 for this one. But this one's going to have two zeros in it. I would suggest putting this one in the graph and calculator, finding where these two zeros are, because I believe they're going to be uh, both decimals. And then you can graph your function like this. And it is going to pass it. It's going to pass the x-axis. And I know that's because it's got two decimal numbers here. So it's actually got three zeros. It's got two here and one here. So I do know it's going to have one going up, and then one going down, and then one going back up again. And uh, that's going to be a wrap. And thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.